Good morning, folks. We're starting with a faint image of a newly discovered comet, the first since Neowise came out of hibernation and a good sign for its future. Its first find is a benign spectacle with an elliptical orbit extending near Uranus, and is currently near perihelion just outside of the orbit of Mars. Doesn't get any closer. Let's jump immediately to the weather. Tropical development continues in the west and southwest Pacific. This gives us a good chance to compare the north and south hemisphere low pressure systems, sucking in, spinning in opposite directions. Now let's compare the wind power of those tropical systems to that of the surrounding area and the south polar streams around Antarctica. One struggles to discern which is the greater storm threat, even as one attempts to monitor the humidity of the streams. It's not until you pull your precipitable water overlay that you see the tropical storms have the most water, heavy downpours continuing in northern Australia while the moisture is lacking to the Antarctic streams. We learned about the mass bird die-off at the coastline here. Well, northwest in Ireland, the affliction has spread to frogs. Luckily, it's a bit of off time for the major storms here. Atlantic high pressure system currently regulating and pushing the convergence further north. Underneath that, we saw another one of those odd brief foreshock situations that don't develop. In the east today, see gulf heat and moisture driving north at the south flow down over the midwest. They will mix there tonight for freezing rain across a wide area. Meanwhile, let's go to the west coast. Five days ago, we first mentioned the storms coming. We'll keep the next drought look in mind to see how they did there. Solar wind calm and calming still. It does indeed appear that our two shocks in the Corona Hole Stream combined for that KP6 storm that is now completely over. Combine the calm space weather with a lack of bigger flaring in general and the polar radiation is fading as well, albeit slowly. The sunspots look weaker than they did yesterday. Good size but no magnetic mixing at the earth facing spots. In coming up north we see a mixing potential but at the lead we need positive umbral development. The beasts down south aren't so much beasts anymore. We do have a delta situation remaining where blue and red collide up top, but the southern mix is of surface features and plaguing. The umbras are separated. Even without major sunspot concerns, the plasma filaments present a remaining ejection threat when they destabilize. Coronal fields stayed open and appear to present coronal holes to earth, but the lower fields, the umbral magnetic fields, block at least the most equatorial of the openings in orange. Beyond the blocking, ISWA reveals the power to be weak. The strong coronal holes are on the way though, down south. You can see their darkness intruding on the SDO AIA-193. Quick site updates if I may. There is a short video on the website homepage that I recommend for your memory bank. It's simple and to the point. For newcomers, membership is only $20 for the entire year, or there is a $2.99 per month option. Do support the Morning News, Yelverton Lab, special features like Agenda 21 Counter-Strike and the Starwater series. I'll also be soon revamping the SO gear, removing a lot of the old designs, adding some new ones. It's something to check. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.